an estate attorney was was quoted as saying that almost every wealthy person should have one of these. And the whole idea is that it's like heads I win or tails we tie. This is Better Wealth with Caleb Williams. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the ultimate tax loophole. And if you're wealthy or you know someone who's wealthy, they should be watching this video because this might not be around for very much longer. And so we're going to uncover what this is and how the wealthy have used it and why it might be on the chopping block. Better Wealth Tax Edition, right hand Dan, let's take it away, man. That's right. So what we're talking about today are rats, which is a grantor retained annuity trust. This is something that the ultra wealthy of the world uses. The Waltons have used it. Um, Estee Lauder has used it. Uh, you know, a lot of names, uh, Michael Bloomberg has used it. Really anybody who has surpassed the estate tax exclusion, which if you're married is uh, $23.4 million. Uh, and this, the whole premise of this is that ironically, that Congress actually opened up this loophole back in the 90s. Yeah while they were closing up another loophole. That's the, okay. the ultimate irony of this is the the grat came out from Congress screwing up essentially. And even that in its own right, I've been thinking about this of like, what is what does even a tax loophole mean? Like That's when you true. look at, when you look up the definition of loophole, all this talk about tax loopholes doesn't, personally doesn't make any sense to me because at the end of the day, this is available. Like, That's right. It's, so what's a loophole about it? It's like, it's something. It's, I think, I think where it comes and we had this discussion with someone, um, that we, we were at dinner, it was like that the normal individual, normal individual doesn't have access to this because it financially doesn't make sense that's for fair. for most people. And so it's not one of those things that's common to talk about, um, but it's the reason why we share this, by the way, is we want our audience to start thinking outside the box. And what we found is uh, a lot of wealthy people have become wealthy because they think outside the box, but then they keep their wealth because they think outside the box. And while this strategy may or may not be something that applies to your life, I'm telling you, work with someone that understands the rules of the game because it can translate into millions and hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, so do you want to break this down and, and how this works? Yeah, so this uh, ProPublica right now is kind of all over the, uh, the news talking about the treasure trove of IRS secrets that they have amassed. And uh, one of the biggest things that they're seeing over and over and over again is like the, the top 100 wealthiest people in our country use grats and sometimes have dozens of them. And I'll explain why, uh, but the whole premise is to avoid a state tax because once you're over that estate tax exclusion, now you're paying 40% on your assets. So think of the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world, the Sheryl Sandbergs of the world, uh, the Jeff Bezos, the Elon Musks of the world. They're, what they are doing is they are maneuvering their stock into these trusts. This is not a new concept. Uh, you know, it's pretty common knowledge that this is what occurs. But the, the premise is, is that after anything that appreciates now can be transferred estate tax free. That is how the, the, this grat works is once you transfer assets into it, anything that is growth. So if I put $100 million of stock okay. into the trust and it grows to $150 million and I die and now the trust is, you know, the beneficiary are my heirs, they would get that $50 million tax free. That's cool. Estate tax free. Estate, yeah. Okay. And so, you know, Steve Jobs had this set up when he was alive and his widow, uh, Lorraine Powell Jobs, is ironically one of ProPublica's largest donors. That's ironic. Who yeah. is running around touting that we, we need tax reform, we need to take yeah. care of these loopholes and all these things. Well, it's pretty ironic to me that she has already taken advantage of this. And what's, and I'll explain uh, that those numbers, which again, ProPublica, uh, reported on her own numbers because they they're just like taking everybody's private information and pasting it all over the world but the thing that is frustrating to me from her specifically is that she she has no idea of a like leaving a legacy like she doesn't yeah. like the idea of le leaving a legacy and said that she's not interested in legacy um, wealth building and that her children know that it sounds very selfish that, that it goes against our own core values of like leaving a legacy and really making an impact. And it's, again, it's a lot of contradictory nature because she's a huge donor. She gives a lot of money to charity, which right. in a sense is leaving a legacy, which, oh, by the way, is also creating a charitable deduction. She has claimed that the Mellons, Rockefellers, and others are dangerous for society mm -hmm. because they're shielding all of this money. Miss Lorraine has $21 billion 
Is this sure. video turned into like exposing Steve Jobs? Not necessarily. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just like it's it's showing that this is possible, <laughs> right? And that the and and the hypocrisy change. of the of the of the people that are saying tax the rich are using the same tax loopholes that they're saying that we shouldn't have. Absolutely. And so she has avoided over two hundred million dollars in estate tax and gift taxes. She has given money to friends, family. Um, charities, all kinds of things, and completely estate tax free. And now she's saying, hey, we need to close these things, yada, yada, yada. And so the the whole premise, again, is that the you're putting money like assets like stock or whatever it may be into yeah. this trust, and you know, you'll be able to pass money on. And an estate attorney was was quoted as saying that almost every wealthy person should have one of these. And the whole idea is that it's like heads I win or tails we tie. Hmm. And the reason for that is because the thing we didn't talk about is what if I put that $100 million worth of stock into the trust and it goes down? Well, there's really no downside. Right. Because I'm not, I'm not going to pay a state right. tax on the loss. It's only on the gain. And so this is where you would see people who have 10, 20, 30 of these things because as they are inv invested in there's different no companies, downside. there's no downside. You just right. throw one of these things together. And so the reason we're talking about this right now is because section 138209 specifically, in the House Ways and Means tax proposal, they're going to close this loophole. And the vast majority of people that are watching this are probably not past the estate tax exclusion of over $20 million. However, the thing that I really want to highlight in this is that things change very rapidly. We just did yep. a video on the 1099K and how the yep. thresholds can yep. be reduced. And so the, the one thing that is very interesting about all of this is that there is a grandfathering <laughs> system meaning that anybody who has a GRAT in place now um, and is taking advantage of it, is moving assets into it, will not be affected. Yeah. And this has not passed yet, but I, I do actually believe this one is going to pass. And so there is a kind of a, a, a charge in the estate planning community saying that, hey, if you uh, have lots of assets, if you have a lot of uh, stock, if you have a lot of um, real estate, or just right. a portfolio. You may want to talk to your estate planning attorney uh, and get one of these set up while you can because it's, I just see it as, yes, theoretically, it's not available to everybody just because of the dollar amounts involved. Right. However, it is it is still available and is something that's going to change. Does it, does it benefit you at all for income tax or is it just estate tax? Estate tax. Okay, so it really doesn't like it. It wouldn't benefit you if you wanted to take that money out while you're alive. It wouldn't necessarily shield it from paying capital gains or income tax. That's correct. Okay, so this is just a it. And again, there's no downside. It's not like it's not an irrevocable trust where that you can't touch it. You could still have right. access you, to those assets. Right. You still have control. And again, the the whole premise there is if if you have that if you have a hundred million dollars of stock, you're not going to sell it for income you're going to collateralize against it to be able to, to yep. use that for your means. That's a whole separate video. The whole premise here is that when this closes, and, they, and maybe this is the uh, the cherry on top that I never didn't even explain, is that let's just say that I have $100 million in these. It grows to 150 and you are the beneficiary of this trust. I die. Yep. You now are going to t get this into your estate. It becomes part of your estate. Hmm. And now anything past that is going to be taxed at 40%, which is another thing that they're looking at changing, increasing somewhere to the 60 to 65% range. So the the whole premise is they talked about the step up in basis and that that went away as far as like, uh, you know, being part of yep. the bill. However, this is basically saying the same thing as now for the grat. Here you go, Mr. Heir. Uh, you, uh, you now inherit all of my stuff and you're going to pay 40% state tax on it. So I think, uh, I mean, that was a good good summary. Again, if you have a very rich uncle, or maybe it's you, definitely talk to a state planning attorney. You can reach out to us. We can connect you with some people that I'm sure can set this up, help you out. Um, and the other thing that I think is interesting, this has happened in the life insurance space as well, is the grandfather um, clause. And it's a lot of times, in is it fair to say, in the contract law world, mm -hmm. where it's like, th it's rare for people to go back, especially, in, we're not talking tax law here, we're talking contract law, where it's like, it's, they're not going to go back and say, hey, we're going to change all these things. We're just going to say, going forward, we're closing this quote unquote loophole. So any final, any final thoughts? Yeah, the last thing I'll say is that the, the other piece I missed was its future transfers as well. So 
future trusts and future transfers are part of this. So really, really? yeah. So so really, really, you have to transfer before this passes. So wh- what do you mean by that? Like meaning you would have to set up and transfer whatever assets into it. Okay, okay, that makes sense. But when you pass away and pass it on to me, let's just say that. So they're going to get the estate tax eventually. So the the I did a poor job of explaining that. So so basically, the idea is that you could just set this up today, but that doesn't help you if you don't transfer any money into it. Got it. Or any sort of assets into it, because it it um, does affect future transfers. Got it. Okay. But then what happens when I die? Like when you die and it passes on to the estate. All right, so let's say that this is enacted at the end of the year. Okay. If I set up a Gratz today. No, I, I understand. Like if you transfer $2 million or $2 billion two years from now, it's 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 not going to. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so that will be a part of but your estate. What, what I'm saying is how do you pass this money on? So in the trust, you have a beneficiary. As if I die and you're my beneficiary. Yep. Now you own the trust. Yes. So now, because of this rule, you it will become part of your estate. Got it. And because you are not part, you were not part of the original setup. The pick a dollar amount, the one hundred fifty million dollars, is now part of your estate, and that is taxable. Thank you so much for listening to the Better Wealth Podcast. It would mean the world to me if you could hit subscribe, leave a review, and share this with the people that you know and love.